everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can structure your IA. Structuring your IA is really important because it's really about how you organize your ideas, your graphs, your research, and your data. That's really going to affect the impression your IA has on those who are reading your IA, whether that be your teachers or the examiner. Putting your IA in a well-organized structure makes it easier for you to convey your research to the readers and the examiner. Having a good structure makes for a better reading experience and is ultimately crucial to scoring high on your IA. But that begs the question, is there a set structure that I need to follow in order to get that seven? And the short answer is, well, not really, but kind of. Contrary to popular belief, there's actually no set defined structure that you have to follow in order to get a seven. If you read sample IAs by other people who did the IB, you can see that there's no like really set defined structure. They all kind of have different structures to them. And that's just because there's simply many different ways that you can organize your data, organize your ideas, organize your paragraphs, that there's not really like a really set defined rigid way to do them. And in addition to that, there's actually three different types of IAs that you can do. You can do a data analysis, you can do a simulation, or you can do a hands-on experiment. And all of those are going to have very different structures. And that's simply because, well, the structure, that's kind of outer layer. It's somewhat superficial. What really matters is whether you are properly using and applying the scientific method appropriately. The point of the IA is to develop research using the scientific method. And as long as you can do that and you hit some certain criteria that the IB wants you to hit, it's really up to you to decide how you want to structure your IA. To recap, let's just review the scientific method again. So the scientific method starts with a question. Then you do background research on that question. Then you construct a hypothesis. Then you are supposed to do the experiment and record your data. And after you record your data, you are supposed to analyze that data and interpret it. And in the last step, you are supposed to analyze your data and draw some conclusions about whether your hypothesis are right or wrong. This is the general style of the scientific method. The purpose of your IA is to conduct your own scientific research through your experiment, which you will then report on in your IA. So the structure of your IA is essentially going to have to replicate or represent this how you use the scientific method. In the rubric, the IB actually outlines what key elements you need in your IA, and that can essentially be broken down into three parts. The introduction and exploration, in which you're going to be conducting your experiment. The analysis, in which you are going to be uh, showing all of the data and analyzing it. And finally, the evaluation, in which you are going to be evaluating and judging your experiment. I am going to be going over the key elements within each of these three areas uh, that you need in order to score the highest points in your IA. And I'm going to order it, so it's essentially like the order in which you should uh, do it in your IA. You can like use this as like an informative introduction to how you're supposed to write the IA, or you can use this as like a tick sheet to make sure that you have all of these elements in your IA. But of course, just to note, there's like exceptions to pretty much everything in this video. My IA didn't have a hypothesis. Some of my IAs didn't have safety and ethical guidelines. It all like depends on your IA. So first, let's start off for what you need in the exploration part. The exploration is all about coming up with your research question, displaying the background information needed, conducting the experiment, and reporting on it well. So there are a few key elements that you want to include in the first part of your IA. So firstly, you need to write an introduction to help identify the topic that you are going to be tackling and the research question that you are going to try and answer. Then you need appropriate and relevant background information to show what your research is going to be based off of. Then you actually need to state your research question paired with an aim and a hypothesis. After that, you will need a section in which you identify the variables of your IA, that being the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the controlled variable. Following that, you're going to want to have a section in which you describe your apparatus that you use and describe the method that you use to conduct this experiment. And finally, you're going to want a section on safety, ethical, and environmental issues. As you can see, this section of your IA is going to be centered around the experiment and developing that question. It's the exploration part of the IA. And if you can do this part well, you're gonna score high marks in your exploration section. Following this, you're gonna have your analysis section, which is all about analyzing your data effectively. In this section, this is where you're gonna put all of your relevant quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative being like the number part of your data and qualitative being the observations that you make with your senses. Qualitative data is more important for chemistry. I'm not sure how much it applies to physics IAs. I don't think it does. I didn't need to do it in my physics IA, so yeah. In this section, uh, you can really be creative about how you organize your data. This for me was really like the challenging, puzzling, like problem solving part of my IA because I had all of this data and I had to figure out like a clear coherent way in order to organize it all so I could fit it all on one page so that's the really the challenge for you when it comes to data how can you like 
fit all of your tables and organize your tables so that it all fits on one page because it's better to have all of your data there for the examiner to see rather than like hidden away in the appendix. If you do any calculations within your tables, you're going to want to have sample calculations below your tables uh, so the examiner can see what you were doing. Even for simple things like calculating the average, it's good to show sample calculations below the tables. So for example, if you're calculating the average, you would like show sample calculation of you going, oh, three grams plus four grams plus five grams and finding the average through that. In this section you also have to state all of the uncertainties for the measurements that you made in your experiment. But on top of that, in order to get the top marks, it's really important that you justify the uncertainties. You don't have to do all of the uncertainties for all of the equipment, but the important ones I would recommend you outlining where you got those uncertainties from. So for example in my IA, I had like uncertainties for the time, uncertainties for the current, uncertainties for the, for the math. And in a table I stated all of those uncertainties and then I also stated my justification for those uncertainties like why the uncertainty on the current was 0.1 instead of like 0.05 which uh, the natural reading would be I wrote that down it was because of the current was like wobbling up and down a bit that's why the uncertainty was bigger than the uncertainty of the actual device if you did a calculation for your uncertainty then it's really important that you show where you got the calculation for your uncertainty and finally, what you need is your process data. This is your graphs and the calculations that you did in order to derive meaning from the measurements that you took. Whether that be making a graph to find the gradient or doing a huge calculation from a titration, the process data is where you put all of the data together in order to find a final result. Process data differs from the raw data from the mere fact that the process data is the stuff that you actually have to do calculations and manipulations to, whilst the raw data is just like the straight up numbers that you write from your experiment. It's really important that you organize your graphs nicely, that all of the graphs have a title, you've got the y equals mx plus c equation on it, you've got an r squared value, you've got labels for the x and y axes. If those aren't done well, then it's kind of confusing for the examiner to read your graph. I would also recommend that whilst you are showing your data, you don't just show it there like that, like boom, here's a graph. You actually explain the graph and you try and interpret the graph. If you're doing any sort of large calculation, you want to take the readers through that calculation uh, so that we don't get lost. You don't want to just throw it there for no reason. You want to explain really what's happening in your data. If there's any confusing parts of your data, you want to put a note on there. You want to put like a note like, hey, this is what's happening here. That's, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> Stuff like that. So yeah. And finally, you have your evaluation section in which you interpret your data, draw conclusions from it, and judge how reliable your experiment was. In this section, what you want to have is a conclusion, which a lot of people like get confused about, but essentially the conclusion is quite simple. All you really need to do is basically describe what you found in your IA. Whatever relationship that you found between your variables, you want to state that relationship in your conclusion. If you came to like some sort of number, you want to state that number with its uncertainty. The conclusion is actually really straightforward and simple. All you're doing in your conclusion is you are concluding. This is not an English essay where you want to uh, recap all all of the ideas that you made in your previous essay and like summarize everything. No, you don't need to summarize here. You don't need to bring in anything new. All you are doing in this part is you are concluding. You are basically saying, hey, I did this experiment and this is what I found. That's what you do in your conclusion. This is not the place to bring in new information. This is not the place to spin in a few fun facts. You want to describe, basically in a summary, what your research was able to uncover about the world. After this, you want a section in which you describe the strengths and weaknesses of your investigation. This is where you're going to describe any methodological issues that you have, any issues that you ran into. But this part is not only about trashing your IA and saying how terrible it was. If you got reliable results, if you actually came to a conclusion about something, this is a really good place to describe the strength of your method and why it really worked. What like extra bit of effort did you add in order to make this experiment a reality? Thirdly, you also want to have a section in which you describe possible improvements to your experiment based off your strengths and weaknesses. You don't want to have it be like completely random, you want to have it Link to your strengths and weaknesses so you want to say like okay based off these strengths and weaknesses this is what I would improve on and finally you want to conclude with some sort of extension that you would do to this experiment what would you do if you had more time what would you do if you could get your hands on better equipment based off doing this experiment what other things could you investigate based off your experiment what other possible things is there to explore like for example in my chemistry IA I did electroplating and saw how the mass changes over time but I could have investigated how like the concentration affects the electrolysis I could have investigated uh, how does the surface area of the electrodes affect the electrolysis I'm basically describing 
all of the things that I could have done if I had more time or if I had better equipment. Finally, at the end of your IA, you want to make sure you have a bibliography in which you cite all your references and an appendix for any extra information that you wanted to add but you didn't want to put it right in the IA. If there are any tables that were taking up too much space in your IA, you can put them in the appendix section if you want. And that's basically all you need to know about how to structure your IA. The point of this video wasn't to tell you how exactly you must write your IA, but the point of this video was to talk about the key elements that you need to include in your IA in order to score that 7. Both of my A's don't follow this exact structure, but both of my A's include all of the elements that I talked about in this video in my IA. It's just not in that exact order, and I have some extra things, and I have some, you know, other parts that I talk about in my IA as well. The second most important thing about your structure is making sure you hit all of the key elements, but the most important thing about your structure is that it makes sense for your IA. So if I had followed this exact structure for my physics IA, then it wouldn't have worked. It just wouldn't have made sense. But my physics IA does make sense because I was able to take all of these key elements and then apply them in my physics IA. So I still have all of these key elements that I mentioned, except for the hypothesis because I don't know why. I just, I just, did, I just forgot to put that in there. But I have them in structure that makes sense for my IA. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. I hope that helped anyone who's struggling to find structure in their IA. Lots of people ask me, oh my god, what do I put in the evaluation? So hopefully this video clarified what key elements that you need in your IA. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in my next video.